Today we're talking about star trackers. What are they? How do you use them? And how can you use them to improve your astrophotography? Hi everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back to Astro Exploring. This is the second video in the series of getting started in astrophotography. If you haven't seen the first video about how to take your first ever astrophotography image, then I will link that video in the description down below. If you have seen that video, then you should be at a point where you're comfortable taking short exposure astrophotography images, stacking them in Deep Sky Stacker, and doing some uh, simple uh, photo editing in Photoshop or whatever software you use and achieving some decent results. But now is the time to take that to the next level and the next level really is to start taking longer exposure images and the only way that you're going to be able to take longer exposures is to use a star tracker so that you can counteract the Earth's rotation. So depending on the focal length of the lens that you've been using on your camera you may have been taking um, 10, 20, maybe even 30 second exposures. With this setup that you see here, um, regardless of focal length, you should really be looking to achieve about two minute exposures. And so that's where you're gonna really start to pull out the detail in the deep sky object that you're imaging. Now this star tracker that you see here is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. It's one of several star trackers out there. I highly recommend this one. This is actually a version one star adventurer. They now released a version two that actually has Wi-Fi capability to um, control images with your smartphone as well. And what the Star Adventure is going to do, after we've pointed our imaging equipment at the part of the sky that we want to image, say let's go for um, the Orion Nebula that's uh, coming into view at the minute, um, then what this is going to do is we're going to point our camera at that part of the sky and this is going to track that across the sky in right ascension. And right ascension is uh, basically the circular motion um, that all stars appear to move around in the sky. Obviously what is actually happening is that it's the Earth's rotation that we're trying to counteract rather than the stars moving. And by doing that it means that not only can we take longer exposures, it means that we can set this up and start taking those longer exposures and we could leave that going for several hours while it tracks the object across the sky and you'll have a good few hours worth of data there to play with rather than just a few minutes which is probably what you're used to at this point. Now in order to get the Star Adventure tracking accurately across the sky you have to achieve something called polar alignment. Now polar alignment is essentially aligning your mount to either the north or south celestial pole depending on which hemisphere you're in. In the northern hemisphere we're very lucky to have the what's known as the north star polaris which happens to be very close to the north celestial pole and so when we're doing polar alignment in the northern hemisphere we are able to align to polaris. And the celestial pole is essentially an invisible part of the sky that all of the stars appear to rotate around, as shown here in Stellarium. And you can see that Polaris is very close to the North Celestial Pole and rotates closest to it. It also happens to be a very bright star. And therefore, by polar aligning to that star, we are essentially able to accurately say that we're aligned to the celestial pole and therefore we'll be able to track the night sky. And if you don't know what polar alignment is and you've never polar aligned before then I actually have a video tutorial where I show you how to polar align specifically the Star Adventurer in the northern hemisphere and so I'm not going to go into great detail about the whole process but I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below and also up here somewhere. And while a lot of beginners can find the polar alignment process quite daunting, um, practice makes perfect and once you've done it a few times and you can accurately track the sky then you'll find that you can actually get set up and polar aligned within just a few minutes. So it's not really uh, anything to worry about but you will find it tricky the first couple of times that you try it. And a question that I'm often asked about polar alignment is once you've polar aligned, how do you actually move the imaging equipment to the target that you want without losing your tracking? And the answer to that is quite simple. When we're polar aligning, we're polar aligning the mount itself, not the imaging gear. And so we are going to, when we're polar aligning, we're gonna move the base of the mount in um, latitude and azimuth to achieve that accurate polar alignment. The imaging equipment is then free to move wherever it wants because the mount is going to stay where it is. So you can move your imaging equipment in right ascension um, however you want. So you could have it like this and then you could move the camera in declination so that it's pointing to the correct spot as well. But you can see that the mount actually stays in exactly the same place and never moves after polar alignment. So it's really important that once you're polar aligned 
to um, make sure that you don't knock the tripod. Now you can actually have the Star Adventurer in a couple of different setups. The setup that I have here is with the L bracket and the counterweight to achieve a fine balance. And balancing your equipment is important. So when I loosen the clutch and move it around like that, um, it shouldn't move. It did move a little bit then, so it's actually a little bit weight heavy at the moment. Um, with the setup that I'm using here, this is just DSLR and a 50 millimeter lens. And therefore what you could actually do is just use um, this adapter here with a bull head and um, it just makes it a little bit easier because obviously a bull head can just rotate in whatever direction you want. Whereas this is a little bit more specific and it will take a bit longer and a bit more getting used to. And I think if you're already an experienced photographer, then you'll obviously already know how to use a bull head correctly anyway. Um, so that's just something to think about. That's when I'm using this setup. If I'm attaching anything longer than that, so a, a longer focal length lens and therefore adding more weight or even my small refractor telescope, then I'll always have it in this setup because otherwise it's just going to be too heavy at the top here and it'll be so unbalanced that the, there'll be too much strain on the mount and it won't be able to track the night sky properly. But if you have the Star Adventurer yourself, then I also have another video where I go through the whole step-by-step uh, -step process of um, how to actually set this thing up straight out of the box. And so I will link that again in the description down below and also up there somewhere for you to check out. And so once we've got the Star Adventurer or whatever Star Tracker you're using set up and we are polar aligned, it's now time to start imaging. And there are a few things to think about before we actually start taking our long exposures. And if you've been doing astrophotography without a tracking mount, then a lot of these settings will be familiar to you, especially if you've watched my last video. So ISO and um, aperture will be staying the same. The thing that we'll be wanting to change here is the shutter speed. And it's important to note that if this is your first couple of times using a star tracker and polar aligning, then while you might want to just start going straight into two minute exposures, uh, I'd really recommend um, just starting out actually with perhaps just um, 60 seconds or maybe even 45 seconds just as a few test shots just to see at which point you start getting star trails so do a couple of test exposures at say 60 seconds and have a look at the outer edges of the frame and see if you're starting to get egg-shaped stars and if you are then that means that your polar alignment isn't quite accurate and at that point you either need to go back and redo your polar alignment or just reduce your exposure time so that your stars are still pinpoint However, once you've nailed polar alignment, then there's absolutely no reason why, if you're using a similar setup to this, you wouldn't be able to achieve two minutes, perhaps even slightly longer, because this is just a 50 millimeter lens. You might be able to go two and a half, three minutes without any guiding equipment. Now, in order to achieve longer than 30 second exposures on a DSLR, you'll want to set the exposure time to bulb, and then you'll want to connect a remote shutter release cable like this one, which I will link down below, I got this on Amazon for about 15 quid, and you'll be able to control the shutter speed on your camera with this. And you'll also be able to set intervals between each exposure, and that's quite important because, especially during the summer months, you'll want your camera sensor to cool down because you can imagine with having your shutter open for two minutes, um, that sensor is going to get quite hot. And so you'll just want to allow a few seconds between each exposure um, to allow that sensor to cool down a little bit. And that will also reduce um, noise in all of your frames as well. And it's important to note that um, different cameras will have a slightly different um, connection on it. And so make sure that you buy the right remote shutter release for your camera. Okay, so now that we've polar aligned, we've taken a few test shots to see what our maximum is before we start to get egg-shaped stars. And we've got the um, camera settings correct. What we'll need to do now is actually find our deep sky object in the sky before we can start imaging it. And I have another video of how to find deep sky objects using the Skywatcher Star Adventure. There's a few different ways that you can do that. And I will link that in the description down below and up here for you to watch as well. Once you find your deep sky, object you'll want to check that you're also in focus um, you could also do this um, after you've polar aligned or, or while you're polar aligning and use use Polaris to, to do this but you'll want to check that you're in focus and the best way to do that uh, with this sort of setup is to use the live view on your camera and zoom in all the way. This has a 10 times zoom, so you get a pretty good um, view of that. And then just adjust the focus on your lens until it is as pinpoint as it can be. If you don't do the live view on your camera, then you're gonna struggle to really get the best focus possible. But just to give you an idea, if you focus to infinity and then dial it back slightly, 
you'll be roughly about there. So that's a good place to start, but you will want to fine tune it a bit more than that. You can also use a little focusing aid called a Batonov mask. And I've got a really quick video of how to focus using a Batonov mask. I'll link that down below. Um, but that is a really great aid for um, focusing. But you'll need to make sure you get the right size Batonov mask for the equipment that you have. Essentially, it will create diffraction spikes and you're looking to create an X with a line through the middle. And then at that point, you'll know that you've achieved the best focus that you possibly can. But they're really cheap to buy. And if you have a 3D printer at home, you can actually just make one of these pretty easily yourself. And so now we should be uh, polar aligned, we are focused, we've got the camera settings right. We found our deep sky object and now we're going to actually start imaging. And at this point, again, I'll still recommend you take a few test shots, make sure that you haven't um, knocked anything when you've been trying to find your target, make sure that your stars are sharp, that your um, ISO is the correct setting and that your exposure time is um, long enough that you'll be pulling out the, those finer details and really making the most use out of using the star tracker. And also don't forget to take calibration frames either before or after your imaging session. There's a lot of information in this video and I know I've linked off to other videos. I didn't want to make this video too long and also cover topics that I've already covered. These star trackers are an excellent way to get into astrophotography. They're pretty cheap. If you're coming from photography, then you've probably already already got a tripod and a bull head anyway. The Star Adventure itself comes in at around £300 and so that is a great way to get into astrophotography. If you're familiar with my channel and you see that I use a big amount called the HEQ5 Pro, if you want to buy one of those brand new they're about £1,000. Um, so you can see that just to get started with some, some really basic equipment, £300 is a great investment. And they're also very lightweight. You can pick this up, um, put it in a, a, a little rucksack and take it out to a darker site than you might have in your back garden. And that's where these things are really powerful. That, you know, This weighs about two kilograms, so you can just chuck it in the back of your... Well, pr probably don't chuck it. You can put it in the bottom of your rucksack and just take this anywhere um, for imaging. So um, that's the benefit of having um, gear like this. And what you'll start to find now is that once you've mastered the art of how to use a star tracker, when you're using um, Deep Sky Stacker and then your post-processing software, I use Photoshop, and you're stretching your images and trying to pull out the most amount of detail that you possibly can without overdoing it, you'll find that your images are so much better than they were were before and just as an example here is the first ever picture that I took of the Andromeda galaxy with um, this camera but a different lens untracked um, I was manually moving between frames and then this image which was the first ever image that I took with the star adventurer of the Andromeda galaxy these were two minute exposures ISO 800 everything else was the same and you can see just how much better the image is is and the amount of detail that I've been able to pull out. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not the best image of Andromeda, but you can see just by how adding a star tracker really can make a massive difference to your astrophotography. And I was actually lucky enough to get that into the um, BBC Sky at Night magazine earlier on this year. And so I was, I was really proud of that. And um, I have to say that this just opened up a whole new level of astrophotography for me, and I'm sure it can for you too. You could get all of this gear from First Light Optic. I will leave links to the equipment in the description down below. If you haven't already, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel hit the bell notifications so that you're notified every time I upload a video. And also remember to leave a comment down below because I love chatting to you guys in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.